Did you know that less than 3% of U.S. adults actually write down their goals, but those that do absolutely kill it, do 10 times more than anybody else? So would you like to know how to write smart goals for 2022 and beyond? You can find out today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 185, and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, middle of October, still business planning month. Last week, we crushed it with reviewing your year. What are we going to talk about today? Well, it's time to set the goals and set your goals and outcomes. What do you want to accomplish in 2022? So that is what we're going to hyper-focus on today. And we actually have a very cool goal writing workbook as part of our mini course. And that's going to tell you how you can get that. Yeah, you can jump over to WBNLcoaching.com. Go to the freebies tab. Who doesn't like a freebies? Uh, and we have a couple of uh, courses there that you could download. We either have the fundamentals of real estate and business plan, or we just have a separate business plan course there too. So I think if you jump into the fundamentals, you'll get even a little bit more action. So either one of those freebies work, but just go over there, sign up for that. And you're going to have a plethora of downloads, not only your gold writing package, which we're talking about today, but we have the documents that we're going to be talking about for the rest of the month. So, you know, while we're talking about that next week, we're going to cover creating an, uh, your written business plan. So actually filling out the forms. And uh, then finally, we're going to wrap it up with measuring and tracking your activities and results. So great stuff ahead. Jenna Bryan, should we just jump in? Let's do it. Let's All talk right. about those goals. And as I mentioned, you know, I uh, I was taught, I, I have something up here that says you're ready to willing, ready, willing and able to join the 10% of successful real estate professionals. Because over the years, I think we just, we have estimated that less than 10% of the people that I've ever come into contact with and the thousands of agents that I've coached, managed and trained do a business plan. But I really do know that the ones that do write a business plan, write down their goals, they stay on track and they accomplish. And generally they do more than what they put down. Uh, so I really want to encourage you to go, if you want to really excel, a lot of times you got to do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. And so if everybody's not doing a business plan and writing goals, why don't you think about doing that? So we want to show you an easy way to accomplish this. And I just want to walk us through how to write SMART goals from our vantage point. And it's kind of like my spin on SMART. And first of all, you write goals, not just I think it's important to just not write down a bunch of wish list items. I think you have to really spend time, cut, put time aside, schedule some time on the weekend, maybe go get a new, this is what I always like to do. <laughs> like I have a million of them. I'll just go to my storage bin and, and get a new journal <laughs> or go get a notebook or a cool pen. I'm always in search of a good pen so that you can do a little of this retrospective look back. And so we did last week, we, but we focused on the numbers last week, but this is about focusing on starting to put, it into gear and setting the intention for your new year. And you're going to write goals in all areas of your life. So personal goals are maybe goals around things that you might want to do that are to work on your professional or personal development. It may be working on how you're taking care of yourself, all, you know, that whatever, maybe you wanted to go read some books next year, whatever it is, those are going to fall into the personal area. The financial is different than business and career. Financial is very specific of what are you doing? Are you saving 10% of all your commission checks to go into a bank account for emergency savings or man, if COVID showed us anything, how important it is to have six months of reserves um, for it always is a good rule of thumb to have that. Or maybe you want to put money towards retirement. That's financial goals. Maybe you want to pay off all your debt. That's Jan's goal. No zero debt. Uh, business and career. That's clearly what we're talking about with real estate. And we will work a lot on that next week. And putting the things into plan, you know, getting clear about how many closings you need to hit your goals and anything else that's around your business or career, then relationship and family. What are those things? What do you need? You know, one of the things that happens to very busy real estate agents is that you tend to work a lot <laughs> and that can impact your relationships with the people that are closest to you. So maybe you want to make some commitments and set goals next year for a date night or, you know, spending time with your kids or whatever that looks like. And then whatever spiritual is for you. So you, you write goals in all areas and we'll walk through what SMART means. And I think it's important to know why your why for the goal. 
So if you, if you dive deeper into it and in the handout, we have a great sheet that, uh, that I got when I went through NLP training, that is steps to desired outcomes where there's nine questions that you can ask yourself when you do come up with your big goals for each of those areas that you walk down. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that here today, but you walk down and it gets you to, why do you want this goal? What's it going to do for you? It's not just a thing that you throw down on paper because if you're connected to it emotionally and it really means something to you, you're going to have a more tendency to focus and set your intention and go take action to make it happen. Right. It's so Yeah. It's so interesting because I think those last couple that we have on here are really, really, really important. They all are important, obviously, but those are the things that are usually forgotten when you think about business planning and really in order to really improve not only your business, but your entire quality of life, you have to include all of that into your plan because nothing should be left behind. It's all vital to your yep. well-being. Right. Absolutely. It's a holistic approach. Yep. So we're going to start with the S for smart and it stands for specific and simple. Is it very specific and simply stated? So for example, you wouldn't say I want to be successful. Uh, it's not, it's not specific enough. You, you here is a, a better example of that. I earn a hundred thousand dollars by December 31st, 2022. And the other thing about goals is there written in the, uh, let's go to the A, because I'm going to talk about that. The A is stands, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'll, I'll ah, go to it in a second. You want to go into, you want to be smart goals. <laughs> we want to be smart goals. Um, but I do want to take a second and say you always write it in the affirmative present tense as if it's already happened. It's very important because you don't say, I want, wish. I always tell people, be, do, have. I am, I do, I have. You, you start letting your subconscious mind hear the affirmation, I earn $100,000. You know, I close four transactions per month. Not I want to close, I will close, because it, it lets you close. off the hook. I hope I close. That's, right. that's not, the words are action. I, I am, I do, I have. So M stands for measurable and meaningful. So measurable is really easy. You know, it's if, if you're going to earn 100000 by the end of the year, you can measure that by checking, adding up all the paychecks that you get, look in your bank account and you'll know. All right. So it has to have some measurement on it so that it, again, if you don't get specific and, and, and have some, a measurement on it, then you're kind of just allowing yourself to not stay focused. It's okay if I don't meet it, you know, because I want to, I want to have, you know, about this much money and meaningful to you is the other M I add, because this is where I was going about the why. Sometimes we are influenced by people that are important in our lives to go do a goal that's really not your goal. And this can go back to what you, your parents wanted you to do, you know, spouses, family members. Are you doing something because you want to do it? Now, don't confuse that with if I do this goal, then I can provide for my family. And that's important to me. That's different than I'm kind of getting pressure from someone to go do X. Does that make sense, Matt? Yeah, it does make sense. I'll tell you another influencer, and another influencer in everyone's life now is social media and YouTube. So, you know, create your own goals to Jan's point. Yeah. You, it's something you're passionate about. Otherwise right. you won't want to, you'll be, you'll, you'll end up being resent, have resentment come up. You won't really want to work on it. And it's counter to the whole idea that goals are one thing. It's important to start with this. And then we're going to talk in the couple of weeks to come that goals, if written down, are the starting point. And I think I have a quote on Zig Ziglar about uh, you write down your goals, you're halfway there to getting them. The other half is 100 percent. You got to take action. OK, you just don't sit around and hope that, you know, hope $100,000 finds its way into my bank account this year. All right. So here's my A for attainable as if now in all areas of your life. So. I want to earn $1 billion by December 31st of this year may not be attainable. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it is for you, but you get where I'm going with that. But so there's a difference between attainable, like stretching yourself, write a goal that stretches yourself, not a goal that will happen if you just barely get up every day and roll through life. Right. So I do think you should stretch, uh, but be realistic. Okay. As if now, as I just mentioned, it's, it, it's written in the, positive present tense as if you've already accomplished it and back to the subconscious mind this is what you keep saying to yourself i close three transactions a month i make five appointments daily i make i don't my day's not done until i i have one new appointment whatever your affirmations and goals are when you keep saying this and working on it you're 
subconscious mind is hearing you say it as opposed to what we generally do 70 to 80 percent of the time of i don't have enough money i don't i don't have any prospects uh, i'm not going to hold an open house because you don't need anybody beating you up all day long we're saying that our fears come up all these things no come up kidding. and then you you get the universe is a wonderful thing and it provides your experience of what you're asking for i want to have 90 percent of the time i'm talking about lack and fear versus abundance and bringing it in and creating it. And I really do believe there's power in this. Matt, do you feel the same way? About I that? absolutely agree with that. Not only just, you know, making things happen, just being happier. <laughs> being positive is a very good thing. So, yes. So let's go through a couple. We have a couple uh, affirmations slash goals that we've got for each of these areas. So family and relationships, it could be something like I communicate with all of my si siblings at least twice a month. This is actually one of my goals from a year ago. I was going to say that sounds surprisingly specific. <laughs> because, uh, because I had, you know, hadn't been with some and, and not others. And then now we're all living closer together. And so I have to work on this one as a new, now it's going to be about getting together two or three times a year, which is part of what our goals were and making it happen. Business and career. I make one qualified appointment each business day, one qualified appointment each business day. That's such a cool, simple goal. Yeah, if fantastic. you just focus on that, just that, then you would go do all the things around it to make sure you got one business appointment a day or you schedule an appointment and you'd be killing it. All right. Financial. I save 10% of my monthly net earnings to my bank savings account. Very specific, very measurable. I said I save 10% of my monthly or just I save 10% of every commission check I earn. I, I, I don't spend it. It goes directly into this bank account. Personal, physical, mental, spiritual. I meditate minimum 10 minutes and practice mindfulness daily. That's a great one. I always have that on my personal goals. I meditate 10 minutes a day. Do I do it? No, I would probably say I do it three times a week. Well, I don't know why I don't do it once a, uh, once a day. It's not but you know what? Here's the point, though. You do work on right? mindfulness. Daily. You do it. So at least you're doing it, you know, don't beat yourself up. You don't do it every day. Exactly. And then fun. I like to add fun hobbies, travel in here as well. And uh, the, you can add that into your personal if you want to, but I visit three national parks in 2022. See how specific that is. Maybe even know which parks you're going to visit yep. and you're going to put it in here and then you're going to make it happen. Or you could even say in April, I'm going here or whatever. So you get the idea attainable as if now all areas of your life written in the present powerful first person realistic and responsible meaning risky this is where you can challenge yourself this is doing that little bit of stretch um you know but yet realistic for example if you think you can achieve x why don't you shoot for z like if you know you're going to hit x you're going to hit 100 grand well why not push yourself and say it's 125 so you just push yourself out of your your boundaries just a little bit and responsible just basically means that you're you're, it's responsible and ecological for you, meaning you're clear about what the purpose is. You're not, it's not going to cause you to do anything that could mess up your overall well being and your relationships and so forth. And the, I like the question, what will you gain or lose if you have it? Because sometimes you are sacrificing something to be able to gain something. And then the, by the other side of that coin would be, when you attain your goal, what's it going to allow for you? That's the great question. If I, when you have this goal earned, this is a why question. What's it doing for you? What's allowing you to have? Is it giving you more freedom? Is it giving you the opportunity to take care of something that's, you know, on your list, bothering you, whatever. Okay. So that's the R. And then the T is seriously time frame and toward what you want. I want to really talk about this toward piece, but time frame, pretty straightforward. Is there a time, is there a deadline on it? Is there a due date? It doesn't always have to be by December 31st. Some of them obviously are. You earn this much money or they could be monthly goals. They could be project goals that you're working on. And you want to get something accomplished by a certain time this next year. And then you can prioritize this, you know, as well. Um, later when we talk about execution, tracking your results, you know, I'll get into the whole, how do you hold yourself accountable? How do you get working the plan once you set the goals? We'll save that for another day. But it really will be all about, uh, taking action and having holding yourself accountable to these actions for you to be able to accomplish no matter what the goal is, personal, financial, or anything. You know, so, and really and truly, if you have December 31st as the due, due date for all your goals, that's a bad way to start your goal setting because you're going to put everything off until December 31st. Exactly, right? So that's why I like the idea of having monthly or weekly goals as yep. well, bite-sized things in there. And you may have this big goal and then you break it down into 
affirmations and goals of how what that looks like on a weekly or a monthly basis. Great. And and then even actions and tasks that are, that are are tied to it, which we'll we'll cover as we go through this. So toward what you want is perfect example is there's always people that say they want to lose weight or they want to get in shape. And so instead of saying I want to lose 10 pounds by June 30th, 2022, you know, you want to rephrase it and you don't it's, it's, it's the negative. It's not writing a goal in the negative, which is away from what you want. I want to lose weight. I want to quit smoking. I want to blah, blah, blah. You know, it's again, to be, ha do be, have, I am, I do, I have, I'm a comfortable size 10 by September 17th of this year of 2022. So what's your, you know, or maybe you could even say your weight, your perfect weight or your clothing size or whatever it is, you're affirming that you are that thing. You know, I, you are healthy uh, and what and define what healthy means to you as opposed to I, I'm not eating these things or those things or, you know, I drink more water. You know, you get the idea. So I love that. I think that is really powerful. I think that's really powerful because once again, like you said, it's just take it's flipping it around. It's taking the negativity out of it and the finality of it, too. That whole mm -hmm. losing weight by pounds is interesting. Yeah. So so reframe it into the toward what you want, not away and not in the negative never no say no uh, of these goals should be written with a negative term to it Just flip it around do it a 180 on it and make it affirmative okay and toward what you want so that's smart so why do you write these things down so i think there is energy behind you doing the work and we're always walking around and i think we have well, i'd really like to have this or that in our head right we're, we're doing goal setting we're, we're focusing when we are focused, not when we're focusing on what we'd like to have ha happen in our lives, but unfortunately, most of us are focused on what we don't have already. Yep. And that's where we get in this vicious, vicious loop, Matt, that you just keep staying in your mind is re keeping you in a funky circle of, I don't have enough closings. I don't have enough this. And, you know, boy, I'm working on this a lot. And I keep coming back to what I coach and what I know, and I'm really dialed in and focused on, I have to do more activities. It's all about more actions and setting the intention and believing, getting up every day and saying, I'm going to meet somebody today who wants to work with me that I'm going to have. But I, if I don't get out there and do the activities and just meet and greet people and chat and all the stuff we've been talking about on the podcast, feeling comfortable about talking about the numbers a couple yep. of weeks ago when we were talking about that, that's what's that's my world right now. I am more confident in getting things happening because I'm doing activities, but I'm also getting myself prepared. I'm, I'm becoming that student, that expert in, in this new area, right? So writing things down really forces you, in my uh, view, to get specific and to be clear. Clarity is so important. And so ask yourself, you know, what drives you? What motivates you? What is it that you really do desire? What do you want? Are you genuinely passionate about it? Is it really something that you want? Are you willing to, you know, what price are you are you willing to, you know, basically the, the question here is what price will you have to pay to reach your goals? And are you willing to pay that price? I was trying to combine those things into one sentence. And, and that's important because if you're new in the business or if you're new to a community like I am, and or you're just wanting to re-jump restart your career and you know it requires you to get out and start farming for example are you willing to take saturdays and sundays and maybe go hold open houses and knock on doors and right. do things that may take you away from something else that was important in your fam with your family or whatever because that's maybe what it takes so what's important here is i also think if you have other people in your life you should do this as a as a an activity i always love to do it with the, my nieces and nephews get them writing goals but with your significant other share what it is get them to do their goals then you that you might have separate goals but where are where do you come together on things that you want to do together as a family unit or a couple or whatever but you would need to share your goals with whoever is important in your life so that they can get behind it because you know what's one of the worst things is going to be if you aren't clearly communicating your goals with people that support you and that are you're supporting them and so forth and they're not behind it then that's going to cause a lot of angst and yeah and stress, okay, for you, that's gonna be yet another hurdle to helping you make it happen, right? Sure. So it, I think it also inspires you to take action when you write it down, uh, because that is what it's all about. The actual test of your commitment to what you say you're gonna do is, are you actually willing to take action? And and if you, and you don't need to take massive, crazy, 
huge action and get all paralyzed by all the things that you need to go do. Cause I get there sometimes I'm like, okay, I can't really do this until I do these 10 things on my list. I'm like, no, that's not true. You could just actually go out and hold an open house because you know how to talk to people, Jan. So go do that. And then later you can work on the 10 things on the list. And that works for me because then I end up having a conversation with somebody. So you have to take action and it's just some small step every single day. And Writing down your goals will help you overcome resistance because if you're afraid to write the stuff down, then you need to reflect on why. Yeah. What is that resistance? What's holding you back? Is it something going on in your life? Is it a concern about somebody, your partner's not going to go along for the ride with you and support you? And so you're just sort of resisting. And if you don't clear this all up, you're just going to be chaotic and have another year where you're, you have no direction and things just, you know, so many real estate agents, in, in my view, in my experience, are just kind of hobbyist. Uh, let me, I really, I'm kind of in real estate, but I don't treat it seriously like a business. And, I'm not, and by the way, that is okay if that's who you are. If you just want to dabble in this because you have other income and real estate is just a fun hobby, go for it. But for the yeah. people that are complaining and, and, and belly aching about, I don't make enough money and this is what you're choosing to do as your career, then you've got to get over that. You either go get another career or get real about what it takes to do commission sales. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, I don't have enough money. The market is outside myself. The market is so hard. It's so competitive. No, it's not. You can just get micro niche down and you can, you don't need 10 closings a month to survive. You need one in most parts of the world. So I don't, I'm done with excuses, even for my own self. Right. Got to be, you got to get comfortable and um, uncomfortable. And that's right what they're there. saying, you know, are you willing to get comfortable with being uncomfortable? Because being uncomfortable is what's going to get you through the wall. The uncomfortableness for me is picking up the phone and calling people I don't know. Yeah. So I always work on ways to call people for a reason uh, that there's something there, but I, you know, and I, but that, I know that that's, I'm starting a whole campaign around listings and, uh, and I can't just mail. I have to be willing to knock on people's doors. I have to be willing to see if I can find phone numbers and call and just have a script and just keep calling because somebody in there wants to sell their house. And that's the mindset that I have to get into when I'm doing it. Not I'm going to bother someone and it's same issues come up for everybody. Uh, you know, somebody's not going to like me. They're going to hang up on me. It's like, look, I have a service. I'm really good at what I'm doing. I'm calling today to see if, if you or someone, you know, that might, might be interested in selling and at the, you know, at the height of this market we're having right now. Not you. Great. No, no worries. Um, would you like to get my local newsletter that I do each month? You know, that, that talks about what's happening in the marketplace. Um, here's an example of it or whatever. That's it. Could I send a, a quick example or, hey, I'm not a realtor that just like is going to bombard you with a million emails. I just really love what I'm doing. I come across that way when I'm talking to people. And the more I have conversations, the more I realize that people actually like to talk about real estate and they like the idea that you might be able to keep them informed. Now, to do that, guess what you have to do? You have to have a monthly newsletter, which is something we've talked about before. All right. So, and then it lets you goals also let you celebrate your successes along the way, right? You can, you can revisit the monthly quarterly, do your quarterly checkups and go, wow, I actually did that goal. Yay. Let me reef, let me set up my next goal or let me take it up a notch. Right. So I love it. Celebrate the win, celebrate along the way. So right. that is all there is to writing goals. And in our, in our goal workbook, you're going to find, as Matt said, one of my favorite words, a plethora of worksheets that are going to help you with the, air, the areas, a place for you to write them. That nine uh, steps to a desired outcome is in there for you to really dive deep into asking the questions. We have some cool stuff in there and all this content that I just talked about is all written out for you. And it is just one of the many things that you get in our free business planning course. You can just get that alone, as Matt said, or, you, or I recommend getting our fundamentals uh, and business plan, which is our first module in our signature real estate sales builder program. Right. I really recommend right. that. There's good stuff in there beyond just the business plan. Now, we want to talk before we go. We want, we have a couple things happening. Matt's going to talk about joining our Facebook group, I know. And also, we're very jazzed about this free event that we're putting together on November 16th. Actually, we have an event coming up for our Facebook group. But why don't you talk about our Facebook group? And we are going to talk a little bit about doing video. But we want to talk also about this big event we're going to put on the 16th. That's right. Um, our Facebook group is called the Dream Builders. And uh, in order to become a Dream Builder, all you have to do is just go to wbnocoaching.com. Let me pull up the little thing there. Um, 
at the top of the website, big, huge green button that says join the, or become a dream builder. So click that button. There's some uh, pretty great benefits to be joining our Facebook group beyond just being able to be part of a community of realtors. Uh, you get access immediately to all of our free stuff. So all of our free courses will be immediately um, assigned to you. If you already have a couple of them, obviously you won't get those again, but you will get the other courses automatically. And you'll also, once you get into the Facebook group, you'll have access to all of our free downloads. So everything will be available for you right there, which is a huge benefit right there. We are going to start doing monthly workshops in our Facebook group. First one starting next week. We'll talk about that in just a minute. We'll also have a um, discount and for all of our WB you know, courses um, once you are uh, become a dream builder. And then as we do different events and um, activities throughout the year, you will be the first to know and you will get special event pricing. So those four things will be available for you if you join the dream builders. And like I said, super easy to do. Go to the website, click the button, sign the form. And as soon as I get the notification that you want to join, I will let you into our group. Not only uh, do you have all that stuff, we always do post our podcast every week. We post all of our YouTube videos on there. And then just anything that comes up that we just want to throw into the group, um, we will post there as well. So it's really like your one-stop shop for everything WB and L coaching. Absolutely. And so November 16th, mark your calendar. And if you get on our mailing list and you will, if you just go on over there and join our Facebook group or get on our, uh, you know, uh, get any of our free downloads, we'll be able to inform you and give you the information on where you can sign up for this. But November 16th, I think we're doing it 9 a.m. Pacific. That's right. So nine, nine to noon Pacific. And where? what are we calling this, Matt? We are calling this the business planning for modern real estate agents. 15 real estate essentials to compete and win in 2022. Such a small, easy to remember title. 15 real estate essentials. And honestly, we are going to do a free workshop for anyone that wants to attend this where we will talk about business planning. I will demonstrate how to complete the business plan that we have, which we have made it much simpler. It's I love the way we redesigned our business plan template yeah. based on knowing your budgets and uh, being clear about how much money you need to cover for your business. We're going to go through all of that, all the way to uh, talking about, I, want to, I don't want to spend a ton of time on that. What I want to spend time on is the activities and the things that you need to do to really compete and win in 2022. Um, can you, hey, Matt, yeah, there you go. Awesome. You can make that, you could bring that up and make it a little keep bigger. making it a little bit bigger. Oops. Down at the bottom there. It's hidden. Wrong way. Um, so anyway, this is, so we're going to cover everything from are you clear about your value proposition um, how we've talked a lot about this on our podcast, but we have this all dialed in with like a ton of content. I'm very excited about working on this thing that we're calling the modern real estate agent epic checklist. Now you just ought to come just for that alone. Yep. It is going to be everything you need to have in place. You know, you're not going to get it done in a day, but you certainly could be working on it. It's going to help you so much with your business planning. And to make sure you're implementing the things you need to do in this day and age to compete against what everybody's wanting. And it's all about being a local expert, being, uh, being clear about what your niche or specialty is, being clear about how to set up that daily schedule. We're going to talk about rebranding, and Matt's going to share things that you can do in Canva to, once you get super clear about that, how do you look like a true business and how do you brand yourself as that local knowledge broker? Then choosing things like uh, what social media platform is the right one for you? Do you giving your online presence a refresh? We got to cover all of this because this is what I am seeing most people do not have, and we're past the time that you need to do this. Okay, right. This time is now. You got to embrace video. We're going to show you about what you can do with video and how easy it is. You don't have to run out and get a YouTube channel, but if you're not using video, you're getting left behind. We're going to show you easy ways to do that. Plus, I'm going to talk about getting more listings how to get more listings and to make sure you're connecting with your, your clients through your client appreciation connection program. Okay. That's what we're going to cover in three hours. We're going to minimize the business plan and we're going to talk about it because you can go get our free business plan class uh, course, but we're really going to dial into what I know people want, which is what do I do and right. how do I do it to, to hit my goals. Okay. So that's yeah. coming up on November 16th. It will be, a free event. You're going to have to register for it and you will not be dissatisfied. We promise because we're going to give you a bunch of stuff to help you with your business. 
But in the meantime, join us next Tuesday in our Facebook group where we will be doing our first live workshop where we will be doing, as we're going to be doing every month, Ask Us Anything, but also we're going to be talking a little bit about video uh, uh, and the importance and how it can help improve your exposure. So yes, on perfect. Day. We'll give you a little, yeah, we will be covering some, some items that we may cover again in that event, uh, but we're going to give you and show you exactly how to go do it. We'll give you a demonstration of things that I'm actually doing. We'll show you real live examples. We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to say, here, here's how you do it. Here's how you use Loom. Here's an example of, here's five ways you can use Loom. We're going to talk about that. So that's okay. it. Man. That's my awesome. Goals. Start doing it, folks. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. Grab the book. Start writing your goals this weekend. That's we'll see right. you next week. Good stuff. As always, all of our um, show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. And uh, get up, get up. Be safe out there, everyone. And be forever wandering, but not lost. Thank you.